Hello, BookTube. I'm here in the little book room, and I have to confess I'm fading fast here. <laughs> so uh, this probably won't be a long video. Uh, feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, but I wanted to show you, uh, just because I love to show you everything, <laughs> I wanted to show you the stuff I got. I went to the bookstore today. And I know that a lot of you are saying, big deal, you go to the Brattle all the time. But no, I went to, I went to an actual retail bookstore today. <laughs> I had errands in two different places in Boston early this morning and they ended me up uh, at the Barnes & Noble in the middle of Boston, the last big retail Barnes & Noble in the Boston area that isn't connected with the university. Big, gigantic glass and steel place with a huge cafe and a huge music section. And Actually, it has two cafes. It has a big cafe, a cafe in the back and what they call a commuter cafe in the front. A gigantic news section the newsstand stretches uh, half the length of the store. Uh, and new releases of every kind whatsoever, just amazing. And so I wanted to show you what I got. I haven't looked at any of it yet. I've just sort of glanced through it. I got, for instance, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, uh, one of the three square bound pulp periodicals that publishes new short stories in, in, in the genre of fantasy and science fiction in America. There's Analog and Asimov's that I subscribe to. I hit a bump in my subscription, and then it worked itself out. And now I get those in the mail. Uh, I also subscribed to Fantasy and Science Fiction and haven't received anything, so I'm assuming I've hit another bump. Uh, so I bought it while I was there, while I was at the newsstand, because I haven't seen this one yet. And the cover certainly intrigued me. She's part cyborg. She's got some sort of weird infection. She's half underwater, and she's holding a pig. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to read that story? I have no idea what any of it means. Uh, but... I got I got this in every issue in every one issue of these magazines you will always find at least one story that's just hair raisingly good just amazing I'm sure that that uh, this will be the same this is a November December issue so uh, it closes out the year and I got a couple of other periodicals one these are these are both periodicals that I, I my subscription I don't think is current anymore I know it's not for the Atlantic. This is, I got the latest issue of The Atlantic with a cover story that says the bad guys are winning. How a new league of autocrats is outsmarting the West by the great Anne Applebaum. And you'll notice the diplomacy involved on the cover. Because there's an autocrat missing, right, from the cover. There's a, there's a modern-day autocrat who's missing. There's a modern-day figure who said, who, who, again, in public, told a reporter that what he really wants is for his people, meaning the citizens of his country, to obey him instantly and without question, like the dictator of North Korea. Uh, there's a, an autocrat who's not pictured on the cover who thought he could use physical force to overturn a legitimate election, and who is certainly going to do that and succeed at doing that in 2024. And the autocrat in question who is not on the cover and who is going to do that in 2024 and succeed at doing it, and I should underscore, and succeed at doing it in 2024, is also in possession of the world's second largest economy and the, largest, the world's largest nuclear arsenal. He's not on the cover of this issue. <laughs> I don't know exactly why, uh, but uh, the main thing that I go for in, uh, in magazines like this is, of course, the book's coverage. I haven't, I haven't actually uh, flipped through this yet to see what the book's coverage will be. Uh, okay, Mark Grief, uh, or Grief reviews uh, The Transcendentalists in Their World, uh, which is a great book, so that's, that's fantastic. That'd be, there's an article here on how lizards are adapting to the world, <laughs> uh, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, I will, I will read Anne Applebaum's piece. You'd be, you have to be crazy to live in the age of Anne Applebaum and not read her stuff, uh, but, I, I will take most of my solace from the book stuff at the back. <laughs> and same thing with this next one, The Nation. I got The Nation as well. Uh, and this will also have uh, books coverage. There's a book, uh, or a piece on uh, John Rawls. Uh, there's well, a whole lot of book coverage here. But, uh, but there's also uh, Aaron Schwartz reviews the new Dune movie. Uh, I, I was there, and I get I get a fairly deep employee discount, so I, I grabbed those periodicals. And I also got a couple of books. 
And they've, I've alluded to them before on this channel. When I was up in Vermont with Frida, we were up visiting Mark Richardson and his family uh, up in Vermont. And we went to a retail bookstore up there, Books A Million. Uh, they have a bookstore. It's, it's right nearby. It's really, really good. Uh, full of stuff. Great remainders. A very good newsstand. And tons of great, well-curated books. I, nothing, but, nothing but admiration for Books A Million. Bam. Uh, but I saw... I saw a book there that I wanted, and I had to restrain myself from getting it because I get a huge discount at Barnes & Noble. I have an, a lifetime employee discount at Barnes & Noble. So it would have been crazy to buy this thing new there for full price when I can get it discounted. It just doesn't really absolve it. It's still crazy to get. <laughs> but inspired by my time up at the old farmhouse, I got uh, the recent reissue of The Eye of the World, the first book in the Robert Jordan uh, Wheel of Time series. Uh, that reproduces the uh, the original cover artwork uh, in half. You've got the end the colored end papers for the for the maps, uh, but you don't have the step back. This this original hard this hardcover does not reproduce that. Uh, let me see here. This is the mass market paperback, same cover, but you notice there's a step back as well. An entirely different picture. The same cover image only from a different angle of our characters leaving uh, the safety of their of their home to go on their voyage. So you have you have that cover, there's them a little bit further along in the wilderness, but here you have them in initially leaving. And uh, that is not in this hardcover, but uh, uh, we watched The Wheel of Time on uh, was it Amazon? The, the Wheel of Time has been adapted. It's been given a live adaptation, and we watched as many episodes as were available. Uh, always fun to do. Always fun to watch stuff with Mark and his Deb because they're, you know, they're they're great to watch things with. Every, all three of us noticing different things. Uh, oh no, the light. Oh no. <laughs> Can we fix that? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yes, a little bit better. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's just a constant battle with the light here. Uh, that Watching that put me in mind to read this again. Uh, and I have the mass market paperback there on the nightstand, and I have been, I read, I read a little bit of it before I got waylaid by Roman history. And uh, I've had my problems with this, with this book, and especially with the series. Uh, and... I wondered if maybe it was time for a fresh reread, and I thought the perfect uh, the perfect opportunity to do that would be because I had just seen as many episodes as the show as was available. I've since learned that the show has kicked up controversy, that there are longtime fans of the book who don't like the changes that have been made in the show. The the forums where I have looked at, the main problem that those fans seem to have is that our main characters have been aged. The young folk that are taken out of... Uh, their safe village and brought out into the perils of the outside world by these two characters aren't children or older children. They're, they're 20 something tobacco addicts, all of them. And fans didn't like that, they, that their characters had been aged up. And there was a secondary complaint that fans had that was my primary complaint because I, re I read these books as they were coming out. I remember them well enough to know that the, the show is 150,000 times more gory than anything in the books. Uh, the books aren't, aren't, you know, children's literature, but the, the show goes out of its way to be explicit in 80 different ways in every episode. And it, you notice it. You really do notice it. Uh, and not always for the good. Uh, but I wanted to get this uh, and just, you know, I'll, I'll reread it, have it on my shelf, and I'll, I'll, it'll be a kind of memento of, the, of our time up in Vermont. Uh, let's see here. Can we... No, can we... No. Uh, anyway, uh, the next thing that I got, the other thing that I got at the, uh, the bookstore, uh, was the same thing. I, uh, the one thing that we didn't watch when I was up in Vermont was, uh, the adaptation of, of Foundation, Asimov's Foundation. That didn't stop Mark and I from talking about it. I was amazed to learn that it's been a long time since he's reread it. Uh, and I asked him when I was up there, do you have it? A silly question. Of course I did. I, I wanted to know, did you have a reading copy? Do you have something that I can read? where I won't worry about destroying it. 
And he pulled out uh, this. He pulled out a Barnes & Noble uh, edition of Foundation. This has Foundation, uh, Second Foundation, and uh, and Foundation and Empire. And so I used this volume to read. I thought we'd open it together here. This is one of those the these uh, Barnes and Nobles uh, custom made editions. There's a whole little section of them in the store. Uh, so you take the the wrapping off here, put that in the pile of junk that's building up here. This is just lovely. That is the the uh, Michael Whelan cover for Foundation. Is that right? Yeah, that's the Michael Whelan cover for Foundation from 30 or 40 or 50 years ago that they have set in the cover. It's slightly elevated from the rest of the cover, and they've given it these this uh, science fiction uh, border art all the way around, vaguely uh, mechanical circuitry border art all the way around. Just a lovely thing. You've got the built-in cloth bookmark, you've got the gilt pages there, uh, and you've got the the vast universe as the as the end papers. Uh, really well made thing, really durable. Uh, but I didn't want to baby, what are you doing? Oh baby bean. I didn't want to put that to the test with Mark's copy, you know. Uh, so I, I and I knew that if I saw this at, a, at Books a Million, I would want to buy it. When that's crazy, I can get a discount on it at Barnes and Noble. So, so that's what I did when I was at the bookstore today. In addition to periodicals, I got these two uh, hardcovers to just go in this room, just go on the shelf, and uh, and in a way also to commemorate that that last wonderful visit. So, uh, so there you go. That was my my uh, uh, my trip to the bookstore. Uh, I, I wanted to walk around the place. I saw a few other things I might have wanted. I think I want a couple more of those Barnes & Noble editions. Here in this room, I have uh, the Barnes & Noble edition of Dune that I like a lot. Uh, and this, this foundation thing, I don't know why. I've seen this before. I don't know why I didn't grab it right away, considering how nice it is. This is a very tastefully done thing. So if this goes in this room, and it's going to go in this room, then that will mean I have the Barnes & Noble Star Trek edition in this room, the Barnes Noble Foundation and the Bar the Barnes Noble Dune in this room, and aside from Michael Crichton, maybe Jules Verne. I think that might be all the science fiction that they make. Uh, but that was my trip to the bookstore. It wasn't cheap, but it, it at least it was you know very nearly fifty percent off what it would have been if I hadn't had that discount. So, and who knows when I'll be back? No idea when I'll be back. The bookstore, far from being a place where I go to work every day, it's not even remotely close to my route, so I may not be back for quite some time. Uh, but I wanted to take you with me to the bookstore, so I'll, I'll wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back.